coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. When God visits you, he comes to fulfill what he has spoken over your life. Has he called you a mother? A mother you are. Has he called you somebody's husband? Somebody's husband you are. Has he called you someone's wife? Someone's wife you are. Like we heard today, has he called you a mighty man of valor? A mighty man of valor you are. Previously on Fresh Dew. Today I came to prophesy to you, and God has already started. This evening, that's what I came to do. I came to prophesy to you. I came to tell you very simply that God will surely visit you. Yeah, 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 yeah. God will help me teach. God will help me prophesy. Genesis 50, 24. And Joseph said to his brother, you will stay there, Grima. I am dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land to the land of which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. Then Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel Saying again, he repeated it, God will surely twice visit you and you shall carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Let me read something here so it settles some things. Though Pastor attended to it this afternoon, for those of you who are not here, listen, as a believer, God's presence is always with you. So visitation does not imply a God who is a guest in your life. It simply means manifestation of his ever-present presence in your life. So this is a prophetic declaration. It is not a positional one. God is always with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He promised. So when we talk about God visiting you, we're talking about the manifest presence of God. When miracles happen, when change happens, when you make a shift from one place to another, that word visit is a word that suggests several things. It suggests somebody coming to you to bring about a transformation in your life. It gives a picture of a superior coming to a subordinate. Imagine if your manager said to you, I'm coming to visit your office today. You know, it's either trouble or promotion. It's one of the two. If I tell my children, um, after you come back, I'd like to have a chat with you. They look at the way I say it. I did, I did that recently, and it was an innocent chat. They began to talk. Mommy wants to have it. Hmm? Even when I tell you, hey, shall I? <laughs> we'll meet after, like you said. <laughs> they, they, looked, they, looked, they looked at themselves. Who she was there? Three of them. They were just looking. Mommy wants to chat with you. It's all well. I'm like, don't we chat normally? <laughs> when your mother says you, I'd like to speak with you, say, Mom, why do you have to announce it? <laughs> Just come and speak. So when you announce it like that, that is a wala, don't land. But when God visits, it's not wala. But that's the word, that, that's what that word visit suggests. To come to you for the purpose of change and transformation. So I'm going to be telling you several things to expect when God visits you. So you don't just scream and shout and say, God will visit me. God visits you and awesome things take place. Awesome things. First thing is that when he visits you, he's on a mission. He does it with a purpose. 
He doesn't visit you aimlessly. You know, there are some people that when they come to your house and they come to visit you, you wonder what they are doing there. But you can't, particularly if they are relations, what's still in your husband's relations or your wife's relations? It's more difficult to say, eh, eh, Auntie, really, why did you come? You might, you, might, you might get into serious village trouble if you try that. But some people are time wasters. They come to you with no purpose. Or someone comes into your office. And if you're half as busy as I am, if you come in without a mission, you are actually wasting my time. Because every second counts. Ah, Pastor, how now? So I look up for my laptop. I'm um, fine, yeah? Okay, Pastor. The weather is hot today. No, no, you don't understand that. We're not here on a social gathering. Say your mission or get out. Because that 10 minutes, I could have solved 10 problems in that 10 minutes. God doesn't visit like that. God visits with a purpose and with a mission. When God says he visits you, he visits you to bring about change in your life. Joseph said to his brethren, I am dying, but God will surely visit you. And he stated it, bring you out of this land to the land which he swore unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Clear. I'm coming to move you. I prophesy to you that God will surely visit you and move you from that land of sickness to that land of health. God will surely visit you. The way we heard it visited Gideon and move you from the land of poverty to the land of abundance. Don't think it's out of place. When he, Pastor, Ch Pastor, shall I give the example of living in a bachelor and owning half of Lekki? Some of you gasped. That was Pastor Charles. That was not a joke. That was exactly Pastor Charles' story. He lived in worse than a bacha. He lived in the market. Pastor Charles is the founding pastor of the Carpenters Church who went to be with Jesus in 2013. He lived in a market growing up in Kano. In a market. When he discovered Jesus, he went from that market to starting a church that is called the Carpenters Church now. And the amount of property that church owns is quite vast. Seen and unseen. The ones you know and the ones you don't know. From a person who was in a market. So when God visits you, he's coming to change your location. To move you from the land of barrenness to the land of fruitfulness. That's what happens when he visits you. God visited Tola some years ago. She was trusting God for a child. That needed to be a restoration child. And I'm sure you have no problem by sharing this because you've shared it publicly. She lost her third baby. It was a very difficult loss because that baby, we all saw her pregnant. Imagine ministering with Big Tommy. We're all waiting to catch that baby. And the baby didn't make it. She went into close to depression. Close. Close. But in all these trips, traveling, traveling, in conversations, God visited her heart. And shortly after that, she took in. That's one of those children making noise at the back. One is my grandson. The other one is my other son. That, that boy over there. He's the miracle baby. He was here last year. Very tiny. He has grown. I think he wants to be an evangelist. He has followed us again. <laughs> to Bini. Maybe God is calling him to Bini. <laughs> this is a baby. Tola's first child is 16 years old. Second child is how old? 12. So look at the gap before this child. When God visited her, he moved her from the land of barrenness to the land of of fruitfulness. And after having two girls, she had her miracle boy. God will surely visit you. That kato peke shinaha, that land you are in, that is undesirable. Today, I come with the anointing of God to tell you that God will surely visit you. Surely, surely, I move you from that land to the land he has. In store for you. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. The land of confusion. Your song is, I don't know what to do. From today, you will know what to do. Yeah. You will start saying you know what to do. Yeah. Do you know who will surely visit you? God. 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 Joseph said, you will carry this, my, my bones. Joseph was so sure that of what he said, as I am sure today, that he didn't say, don't bury me. 
Just put me in a coffin, keep me there. Because this place, we are leaving it. I prophesy to you, that place you are in now, you have left it. That place that looks like Egypt in your life right now, I prophesy to you, you have already left it. Begin to pack up your things in your mind. Begin to relocate yourself in your mind. Four hundred and something years before, Joseph had left. He saw himself and his people out of Egypt. He said, surely, surely, God will visit you. And don't leave me out. Don't leave my bones here. Take me out of here. Take me out of here. Because God will visit you for a purpose. And when that God came to Moses to fulfill this and get the people out, God said, just in case you're not sure, it is I am that I am. Haya, Eshe, Haya. That's what that means. The one, he says, I exist. That's basically what I mean. Like the verb to be. I become and I exist. That is the one coming to visit you. The one that exists. Lord, who would they say is coming to visit me? Haya, Eshe, Haya. Omu, I'm the one. And I'm coming, <laughs> I'm coming to fulfill that prophecy over your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say God will surely visit me. Oh, when he does that, he comes with a purpose. Next, he comes to fulfill the word he has spoken over your life. This is not the first meeting you've gone to as a Christian. That words have been spoken over your life. Some you remember. Some of you for, forgotten. God hasn't forgotten. I'll say what I said again. God has spoken certain things over your life. This is not the first meeting. I'll be a very stupid pastor to think I'm the first person that God has used for many of you. I may be for a few. For many of you, you've met real men of God who have spoken into your life and said things over your life. Some you remember, some you have forgotten. God has not forgotten. When God visits you, his word over your life is fulfilled. It's fulfilled. What's that word you've been holding on to? Even the ones you didn't know, it's fulfilled. Look at that person God visited. Genesis 21 verse 1. And the Lord <laughs> visited Sarah. As he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. The Lord did not do for Sarah as he just felt like that day. Or the Lord not did for Sarah as Sarah was crying too much. So he now, like we learned in the morning, the Lord, you see, you see, if only we understand the power in the word of God. More and more, revelation is coming to the body of Christ about what we have in the word of God. The word of God has been despised. The word of God has been looked down upon as a weak thing. Somebody once told us that in our church we speak Queen's English. We don't speak, we don't have power. He revealed that he was a daft pastor. I repeat. He revealed that he was a daft pastor. Pastor, you are a business man of God. No, he just revealed to us who he was. For the man that will say, you are speaking Queen's English, you know the word, but there's no power in that. He does not know the word. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel is the power of God. So if you think there is no power in the word, you don't know the word, and that's why it's not working for you. When God visits you, he comes to fulfill what he has spoken over your life. Has he called you a mother? A mother you are. Has he called you somebody's husband? Somebody's husband you are. Has he called you someone's wife? Someone's wife you are. Like we heard today, has he called you a mighty man of valor? A mighty man of valor you are. He visited Sarah and did to Sarah as he had spoken.
spoken. One of the ways to open your door to God's visitation is to hold on to the word he's spoken over your life. I'll say that again. One of the ways to keep the doors open to God's visitation over your life is to hold on. Some things he said to you 20 years ago, hold on to it. Everything looks like mm -mm, it's not working. Hold on to it. Jeremiah 29 verse 10. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years I completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return. You say again, movement, to this place. Say, I will visit you. Say it loud. I will visit you and perform my good word. What is his good word over your life? His good word is not necessarily a word that makes you feel good. You'll catch that now. You won't catch it tomorrow. I'll say it again. His good word is not necessarily a word that makes you feel good. His good word is a word that is good for you. Everything that is good for you doesn't always make you feel good. Anybody who had a mother like me who disciplined her children can say an amen to that. Amen. amen. <laughs> what is good for you doesn't always make you feel good. In fact, most likely, if it is good for you, it will not make you feel good. Put off the TV, turn off your tablets, doesn't make you feel good. What is good for you? Don't eat ice cream three times a day. Doesn't make you feel good. What is good for you? Leave that man who is not born again. Stop going to him. Each time you go, you sleep with him. Stop it. God has somebody for you. Hold on to that word. It doesn't make you feel good. But it is his good word over your life. God will visit you and break some relationships. Amen. God will visit you and bring in new ones. Amen. God will visit you and ask you to give out certain things very precious to you. It may not make you feel good, but that visitation will make you, will cause him to perform his good word over your life. When God visits you, he does it for a purpose. When God visits you, his word over your life is fulfilled. He will shift your life. He will recalibrate your life. I prophesy to you that as God visits you, your life is shifting. I speak into your lives and declare that a recalibration is taking place. I prophesy to you that change has come into your life. Areas you never believed you would think in a particular way. When God visits you, as he has surely promised he would, after this meeting, you will recognize that in some areas of your life, things you thought you believed strongly, you will have a different perspective and a different view on them because God's visitation will open your eyes to revelation. God's visitation will show you the good plans he has over your life. And you see that those good plans are far better than anything you can hatch or manufacture for yourself. May your life shift. Amen. May your life change Amen. for the better. May it move into the word of God. May it move into the good word God has spoken over your life. If I did not leave my job in the oil industry, if I did not shift the word of my life right from my mother's womb, that I'd be doing this thing that God has called me to do, I may never have entered it. But I needed to receive a shift and a calibration to take a step. And that is what God's visitation has done for you in this meeting. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Tell him, Lord, I'm ready to move. Tell him, Lord, perform your good word. I don't want anything else over my life. Tell him, nothing else but your good word. Nothing else but your good word. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. <laughs> Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Genesis 18 and verse 10. And he said, I will certainly return to you, talking to Sarah whom he visited, according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Sarah was listening 
in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were very old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. But Sarah was very old. Abraham, too, very old. Advanced in age. So as if old was not enough. The Bible went on to explain that old, well advanced. So it wasn't like 45 old. The the old was mature. Not 55. Now, I'm I'm 54. My husband is 61. If we both go now to a doctor and say, I want to have a baby, he will start laughing. He will, they will just start laughing at us. Say, he wants to do what? We want to have another baby. Why? We are old for that project. We're not old for many other things. <laughs> but we are old in the fulfillment of that. Uh, I think some people understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I feel like I don't understand. But we are not that old, but we are old for childbearing. So they would have told us, Mm-mm. they would start laughing at us. This was not that kind of old. This was old, old. Mature old. They were well, not just advanced, they were well advanced. Because I will visit you according to the time of life. Are you happy so? What was lacking in their lives? Abraham was very rich. Silver, gold, and cattle. He had God's blessing upon his life. So what was lacking? What needed to manifest in their lives? A son. I will visit you according to the time of life and you will have a son. The very thing that was lacking. When God visits you, everything that is lacking in your life is taken care of. I say it to this side so these people here can hear me and receive it. When God visits you, whatever is lacking, that vacuum in your life shall be filled up to overflow in the name of Jesus. I came to visit God says and you will leave here with the impact of my presence Jehovah Jireh comes to visit your finances are impacted Jehovah Rapha comes to visit your body is impacted Jehovah Shammah comes to visit you know he's with you Are you alive but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question. And he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide. And he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud from the depth of your heart and you will be saved Lord Jesus I come to you today I believe you are the son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised I will live for you all the days of my life. 
In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 37 37 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.